Hi, and welcome to the interviews with a Hunting Masters Campfire Session. I'm back on with Brandon Walker of Avid Hunting. Uh, and we're just going to, you know, shoot the shit a little bit about some of his uh, hunting adventures and, you know, see what uh, what we can take from that. How's it going? Good, good, good. Glad to be here. So. Well, um, basically, I, I asked the same the same thing of of all the people that are on for a campfire and i ask you to share you know one story with us that had like a maybe like a aha moment something that had like a teaching point or maybe changed the way that you you hunt today and and then maybe if we have time you share another story was that was your most memorable hunt like one of your most outrageous crazy hunts that you know it's just going to stick with you for life so um Okay. So if you could just go ahead and share with us a story that you think that maybe has a really good teaching point, maybe can, people could take something from. Well, um, I think the, the the one I was thinking about, um, it was two years ago, and it was just our general season archery hunt here. And, you know, I had done all my scouting and whatnot, and um it was the, let's see, it was the third day. So it would have been, our hunt starts on a Saturday. It would have been the Monday. That Monday morning, we had um, spooked one of the bucks that I had been chasing, uh, spooked him out of the canyon and into a kind of across and into another canyon. Um, and so that night, we didn't know what to do we kind of decided well maybe we'll just go over there in glass and see if we can see him so sure enough mm -hmm. go over there glass we spot him um i get long story short um i ended up getting in close uh or semi close actually actually real close he actually came um my he came right to me where where he was feeding and then uh, and it happened so fast i ended up shooting him and it was probably it was like 15 yards and i hit him really bad it was really high above the actually above the spine arrow went straight through him out the other side mm. and and i knew the instant that i hit him that it was a it was a bad shot and and so i just you know my heart sank i wasn't i was just you know beyond myself anyway go i watched exactly where he went i thought i saw him go bed down um i was out till one o'clock that uh night you know we gave him some time but i was out till one o'clock looking for him or looking for blood see what happened um couldn't find him went back um in the morning uh, and started looking same thing picked up the blood trail couldn't the blood was so minute that you know we just couldn't follow it and um just kept looking around and spent in a, i think it was around noon that i had just hiked up every single thing looking for him and pretty soon the idea just clicked to me i'm like you know i wonder if he went back you know to where i originally seen him you mm -hmm. know because i had done my scouting and i had always seen him he kind of did this same little pattern in this one canyon and we had spooked him out of that canyon originally that day and i thought well maybe maybe he went back i don't know you know sure enough put up my spotting scope or hike to the top of this hill put up my spotting scope and there he was sitting underneath a bush with with uh, this other buck um and i just couldn't you know couldn't believe it i'm like oh, god we spooked him out of there why did he go back you know and that was at that time i just realized that you know deer i don't know some of them will uh, they'll go where they feel comfortable or what they're familiar with Mm -hmm. You know, I understand other ones, you spook them out of an area, you'll never see them again. But, you know, for some reason, you know, check if you've done your research and if you've seen them there before, keep checking there because sometimes they, you know, they'll go back or they'll continue with those patterns, whether they've been spooked out of there or not. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, went, went back over there, snuck up to him, 
and I had I shot him and um, and that was the end of it but it was just a, a, a good teaching moment for me mm-hmm. anyway to you know always be persistent I guess and yeah and keep after it so I think a lot of that has to do it's very area specific I think the ones that like I think if they blow the ones that like blow out of a like a canyon or whatever and never come back are ones that have never seen humans before. Yeah. Because yeah. but and I, and that that could be I mean there's an exception to every rule, but uh, exactly. But I yeah. feel like if they've been bumped before by hikers or whatever, it's just something that you know, that happens. They'll, they'll go to a little sanctuary for a little bit, but then they come back. They're in that area for a reason. Yep. They feel it's, comfortable. It, yep. There's food there. There's water there. There's good bedding cover. There's escape routes, whatever that is. And, yep. or, or maybe it has all those things, which really makes them want to come back. Um, yeah. And I, I, you know, there's been many times, well, Utah, for instance, so last year, I must have put mm, 12 different stalks in the same bowl on deer. Yeah. On the same deer or just the same? Uh, the same deer like three, four times, you know? Okay. But yep. the same deer, kept, I mean, there were several groups of deer that I kept seeing, yep. you know? And I held the one I, I, I took a shot. It was like the second morning. I had a. 50 yard shot. He was facing straight on at me and it was super windy. And I came over the top of this ridge and I got the full draw and I just never settled my pin. I was just kind of like wavering back and forth like this. I don't know what the freak I was thinking, to be honest with you. (laughs) And I almost got, I almost got him. I literally shit his hair off, you know? Yeah. I mean, it had it been a broadside shot, he would have been dead. Yeah. Because I I, I literally missed like, you know, like four or five inches. Oh, you know, from where I was aiming, it, it, it like, it skimmed his shoulder. Got and, it. Um, anyhow, I actually stalked that buck twice in the same bowl. Uh, I mean, I shot at him, yeah. getting my hair cut, and he still, it wasn't he exactly stayed the there. spot, but he was in the same basin. He was in the yep. same bowl. And, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. If, as long as... I think it takes a lot to really get them completely out of the country. Yeah. You know, they might go over one ridge and drop down into the next and then, especially mule deer. Yeah. I think mule deer have a much short, shorter term memory than like, let's say a white tail. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, <laughs> I'd agree on that. And like, see, like <laughs> now if you, you're talking about white tail and you go back East or you Midwest or whatever, and you, and you booger up a deer, that's, he's not going to be, coming past that tree stand ever again yeah nine times out of ten again exceptions to every rule but yep or he's going to be looking up in that tree every time he comes down there but (laughs) you know it's just uh but i think mule deer tend to kind of like you know hey i'm they're out of sight they calm down it's time to get back to whatever whatever the the agenda is whatever mule deer do doing mule deer things Yep. And uh, yeah, so. Amen. But no, I think I think people should take that, you know, take that and keep that in their mental Rolodex to remember, you know, hey, just because you booger that deer up doesn't mean he he may he may be back in that same health. Henry was just telling me that the the buck that he or was I don't remember if it was Henry or I also had Patrick uh, Montgomery on yesterday, and. Oh. Uh, I want to say he, t- one of the two of them told me that a, a deer that they missed or that they spooked out went embedded literally in the same bed that they, and he stalked him in the same spot and ended up killing him the second time. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so that's interesting. Yeah. So tell me about your most outrageous hunt. Um, God, you know, I, no, my most outrageous hunt. Yeah, I don't know on that because that was kind of my most outrageous. But um, one that I, uh, my, um, well, let's see. I don't know. I've kind of got a a few, I guess. Uh, 
the let's see, three years ago, four years ago, I drew a bull tag in Utah, and it was a muzzleloader bull tag, uh, and you know, same thing. Went up, did my scouting, didn't find anything I was really excited or about. Uh, one bull that I did find, he was a in this particular unit it's it's known for having big five points which i kind of like because they you know they've got big whale tails you know so it's kind of kind of cool in its own way anyway so um and and this bull had it but he wasn't exactly what i was looking for uh anyway long story short had a heck of a hunt super fun but couldn't find uh, the bull that I was after and went back to the original spot. And there this bull was that I had spotted the week before big five mm-hmm. point in the, the same exact spot. And I just, I, and my whole family had shown up the night before I had my kids, I had my sisters, my brother and my friends um everybody was there so i decided to shoot him it was absolutely pouring rain but <laughs> and it was muddy miserable conditions but it was it was it wasn't outrageous but it was perfect because i had everybody there and that meant more to me than you know than shooting the biggest bull there was or anything it's right, just cause... we all got to we all got to experience it and and be there and so that was fun. It would, they could pack know. it out for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and it just happened to be, to be honest with you, it was probably a hundred yards off of a road. Oh, so that's awesome. It was, I mean, it was easy, pleasy besides the rain. I mean, you know, yeah, I didn't have to hike over, you know, tons of canyons and all that jazz, you know, it was just right <laughs> off the road. It was perfect. And everybody was there to see it. So nice. <laughs> but, nice. But, yeah, I honestly, except for one, one elk that I've shot, all my elk have died within a, within a few hundred yards of a road. Have they really? <laughs> I've I, I've gotten so I've like knock on wood, I've gotten so lucky so many yeah. times. <laughs> I mean, I've been plenty of times where I wasn't the hunter, unfortunately, uh-huh. which makes it even worse because it's oh, not yeah. even your bull. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you got to do all where I've had to pack them out of a shitty ass canyon. My, <laughs> oh man but uh yeah no i i I've, I've been really lucky i like it's crazy this last one i shot in november um had he died where i shot him it would have been a shitty pack out yeah, yeah. but he ran for like 400 yards <laughs> downhill down to a freaking road i mean he died oh that's perfect years. He died like 200 <laughs> yards from a road. I was like, yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I hit him a little high, so it took him a while to die. Oh, yeah, it was, got it. Yeah. But um, yeah, it is what it is. It worked out. Good deal. Good deal. Cool. Yeah. Well, awesome. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for coming back on and uh, sharing your stories with us. Yeah. Anytime. Anytime. So. Cool, man. Well, thank I you. will. T- I'll talk with you soon. Okay. Thank you, John. Sure appreciate it. Bye.